Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us on Channels Television. The program is Health Matters, and I am Mary Alale Yusuf. All blood is red, but not all blood is the same. It can be divided into four groups according to the antigens, which are proteins, found on the red blood cells. This classification gives us the A, B, O, and AB blood types. Each group can be divided further into a positive or negative type by the presence or absence of a racist or RH factor to a total of eight types. The mixture of different blood types in a person can come with serious consequences to the receiver. This could happen during pregnancy. I have Dr. Titi Adeyemo on the show today to discuss blood and the research disease. Dr. Adeyemo is a consultant hematologist at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital. You're welcome, Doctor, to the program. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Now, that was uh, just uh, <laughs> a very, how do I put it, general description of blood types and the negative and positive resource factor. But what is the resource disease? Um, we've done very well in classifying the blood into the different groups or the different types as we may call it. Um, but just like um, the color of our eyes or the texture of our hair, we inherit the HBO blood types or the resource blood type from our parents. Um, most people would inherit a positive resource blood type and a few would inherit the resource negative. The resource, as you also noted, is also referred to as the RH blood type. Okay, when people inherit the RH um, blood type... That's when they are positive. When they are positive, um, we, you will put the symbol positive beside their HBO blood type. And when they lack the RH factor or the RH antigen, then you put the symbol negative beside the HBO blood type. You see, the RH blood type is just a type of protein that we find in red blood cells. And it just simply distinguishes blood into positive or negative. And it has absolutely no effect on our health system. But as you noted, uh, on our health, but as you noted, it is, um, it is very important in pregnancy. Okay? It's important in pregnancy because when a woman lacks the resource factor on her red cells and a homeborn child has the resource factor on his red, his or her, um, red cells, then there will be resource incompatibility. Okay. okay, that means differences in the resource factor that is inherited, different differences between the mother and the, the unborn child um, resource factor. The implication of this is that if the unborn child red blood cells should move across the placenta and enter into the mother's bloodstream, then the woman can develop antibodies against this blood That's antigen. The protection mechanism. The, it's normal, natural so protection she, mechanism. is treating it as, as a foreign, as a foreign protein, okay? okay? And it should be attacked, it should be gotten rid of, okay? So the woman becomes sensitized and develop what we call maternal alloimmunization. So that means the woman has developed antibodies against the resource factor. Um, but thankfully, it's not all women that is going to become alloimmunized, even though they are resource negative. Okay, evidence have shown is that it's only about one in five women that are going to be alloimmunized, even though they have a resource positive child. Even though they have a resource positive child, because there are so many other factors, okay, that may influence whether the woman will be sensitized or otherwise. Well, um, for example the amount of fetal blood that eventually uh, that escapes into the mother's bloodstream is going to influence whether the woman is going to be sensitized. Um, a concurrent ABO incompatibility or otherwise, okay? If the mother, for example, is blood group O and the child is blood group A or B, okay, that is also going to reduce the chance of um, um, high um, 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 alloimmunization, okay. okay? Because the woman is going to clear the ABO Incompatibility is going to clear out the fetal red cells as fast as possible before the woman will be um, okay. Because it's not her blood type. It's not her blood her type. Her body just sends it away immediately. Immediately. So there's no mixing. Exactly. As it were. More or less. Okay. So there will be no opportunity to have resource isoimmunization. So by and large, it's only one in five women 
that are going to be sensitized and develop these maternal antibodies against the results factor. Okay, in this um, percentage of women, the implication is that these antibodies is going to move across the placenta, just as the fetal red cells moved across the placenta into the mother's bloodstream. The antibodies is going to move from the mother's bloodstream across the placenta into the baby's bloodstream. Okay, and since it's an antibody against the results factor, then it's an attack against the baby. It's an attack, attack against the baby's red cells, which starts to destroy the baby's red cell, and then the baby will become anemic, and then the breakdown of the red cells is also going to result in a high bilirubin level, okay, which is actually very dangerous for a de developing baby. That's what causes the skin to turn yellow. That's what causes um, the jaundice, okay? The jaundice, um, the anemia, the jaundice is going to start even when the baby is still in the, in the uterus, okay? And then it's going to continue um, after bath unless an intervention is put in place to reduce or to remove the maternal okay. antibody. So at the point that the child is born, what is done so that this attack can stop? Since the attack did not stop after the child was born, it continues. What is done for the child? Okay, as time? I said, as long as the maternal antibody is still in the baby's bloodstream, the attack on the baby's red cell is going to continue. Okay, so what we do is um, what we call exchange blood transfusion. Okay, um, if the maternal antibody is of low quantity, okay, and the ongoing um, destruction continues, you can manage, depending on how much bilirubin and how severely anemic the baby is, you can manage with some photo, um, phototherapy, okay, put the child under a fluorescent tube to, um, to break down the bilirubin, okay, which is a product of the, uh, a byproduct of um, red cell breakdown, okay, um, and that may be enough, but when the allo antibody is of a high level or high titer and the destruction continues, okay, then you need to take away the antibody as fast as you can by doing what we call an extreme blood transfusion. Okay. okay. Now, because you don't case, want the bilirubin to, to build up. In this case, when you do a transfusion, you put back in the baby the same blood that he's supposed to have. Isn't that correct? Well, actually, the, the baby has the blood type he's supposed to have. He has a normal okay. blood type. It's just that by, by, um, by what has happened, the maternal allo uh, immunization, antibodies from the mother is destroying. That's why, this is okay? the reason why So I'm what asking. you need to do is to take away the maternal antibody. Because the maternal antibody is in the baby's bloodstream, they need to take out the baby's the blood. blood. Okay, so when you take out the blood, then you, you now effectively give. handle the antibody problem. Exactly, you take away the antibody as much as you can. Okay, the more effective your extreme blood transfusion is, the more effective you can take away the maternal antibody, okay? And then you give a child blood that is compatible with the mom, that the antibody is not going to attack, okay? So you, you give the child a resource negative blood, okay? Um, a resource um, antibody is not going to attack a resource negative blood. So that, that way, the destruction of the, uh, of the baby's stress cells will stop, and then the bilirubin will stop to build okay, up. I okay, I want to make this really clear. Okay. Let's say the mom is O negative. That is usually where you have results. Then her child is O positive and this thing takes place. Exactly. The child is born. What you're saying is that if you have to give him a transfusion, you take out that blood, then give him O negative blood. Exactly. Ah. Okay. So that the antibody will have no resource factor to attack. Okay. And the rest of the breakdown will stop. And then you will have anemia not progressing, I mean, okay. I mean stopping, and then you will have the bilirubin not building up, okay? okay? And then that removes the danger that high bilirubin can, can do to a child. Okay, but we've been taught that uh, the marrow, the, the, the marrow produces blood. Exactly. You've now given this child O negative blood, but is his marrow not producing O positive? The marrow is producing O positive, but remember, you've taken away the antibody. So when the marrow eventually produces the O positive blood, which is normally going to do, there is no more antibody to destroy, okay. to destroy the baby's red cell anymore. So the baby is going to grow up fine and, and, and healthy. Okay? Does it always work? It, it Beautifully always, like this? It always does work. It okay. always does work. Okay? In fact, that is the major uh, medical intervention we can offer, especially when it is a severe disease. Okay, if it is still mild, you can manage with phototherapy and expect that normally the maternal antibody goes down with time. Mm. Okay, the uh, maternal antibody have 
um, it has a, li a half-life. Okay, it's just going to go down naturally over time. And then time. the child will pick up. And then the child will pick up, okay? Now, what of if the case is so serious that the child is likely to die before he's born? Is there an intervention oh, that can that's, take place? That, that becomes a bit more complicated and you need sophisticated specialist care. Okay. In fact, such cases have to be managed by maternal fetal medical specialists. Okay. There are people who are specialized in that area of medicine. Okay. Because what they have to offer is to determine the risk of the child having a severe disease. And if that risk is determined, then in the intervention, it's just like after um, I mean the extra uterine life, is to do a blood transfusion. Okay, to inside, the, inside womb. the womb. Is this possible? This is possible, and this is done where uh, facilities and the specialists uh, Okay, let yeah, me, let me ask a sensitive <laughs> question. Can that be done in this country? Oh, not, not, as far as I know, not yet. Oh, pity. <laughs> now, that's actually still a, a very technical aspect of medicine. Okay. But um, um, intrauterine fetal transfusion, okay, is possible and is done in um, advanced places in the world. How prevalent would you say this condition is in this country? Um, with resource incompatibility and the resultant resource disease is actually a very rare problem where you have good medical practice, mm -hmm. okay, because it's a very preventable complication. Okay. Is it possible for you to, okay, you said that as far as you know, we're not having this uh, intra-uterine uh, blood transfusion. So is it possible to sort of reduce the uh, of course, as I said, the main level while the woman is pregnant. There are things that can be of done. Of course, of course. The main, the main focus of, um, of preventing resource disease is, uh, it's, um, it's, I mean, the main focus of treatment is prevention. Okay, how you need or we need to do is to determine whether a woman has a resource factor or otherwise. Okay. If she lacks a resource factor, then, then you, you know, watch her closely. Yeah, then you know that she has a risk of developing resource isoimmunization. Then okay. you need to prevent that. And it is very preventable. Okay, there are vaccines available, okay, that you can give a woman that will suppress her ability to produce resource antibody, even though she's, she is resource negative. At okay? what point in the pregnancy do you administer these? Huh, in fact, a, 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 every woman in the childbearing age should be aware of their resource or their high rate um, type. Okay, and once it is, this is identified, it needs to be given. At any point in time, you have a risk of fetana, maternal blood exchange. Okay, once there's a risk of the mother, baby's blood being mixed, um, then you need to give um, the, the vaccination. For example, if a woman gets pregnant and there is an abortion, whether a miscarriage or an induced abortion in the early, even the early phases of pregnancy, and she's resource negative, then you have to give the vaccination, okay, so that you can suppress her ability, okay, to produce the antibody. Because um, during the procedure or during the miscarriage, there is a risk of maternal fetal blood exchange, okay, and that will stimulate or sensitize her, okay, so you need to give that. Um, but if a woman comes to you pregnant, what we do is to determine the resource type at the very first prenatal visit. Okay, we determine the ABO blood type, we determine the resource blood type, okay? And then if she is resource negative, you determine whether she has already developed an antibody, okay, from prior exposure. Um, and for, if she has, what do you do? Oh, if she has, then you have to monitor that pregnancy closely, okay? You monitor the fetus with ultrasound, you monitor her antibody level and see how it rises, how fast or how slow it rises, and then you also monitor the fetus closely with ultrasound scan and some other technical um, things, um, Doppler ultrasonography, um, uh, doing amniocentesis to check. That's when you take a bit of the amniotic, amniotic fluid, fluid okay, and test it. And test it for bilirubin level, and you do that regularly, let's say monthly or twice weekly or weekly, depending on the stage of pregnancy, to see how fast the fetal cell is being destroyed. Okay, But if she is not yet sensitized, then the most 